Richie Sandoval was born on October 18, 1960, in East Los Angeles. His family moved to nearby Pomona when he was two years old. Sandoval was born into a boxing family. His father, Chris, boxed professionally as Shorty Sandoval, and his older brothers, Alberto and Joe, also preceded him into the sport. Joe was better than Alberto or me, Richie said. In the amateurs, he beat Andy Price, Pepino Cuevas, and Carlos Palomino. Joe would have been world champ, but he started hanging around with the wrong people and wound up spending two years in prison. When Joe was released from prison, he had two professional fights and then quit. The official reason was that his skin cut too easily, but the real reason was that he just didn't like boxing that much. Meanwhile, Richie's other brother, Alberto, became a popular draw at the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles. Nicknamed Superfly, he challenged Lupe Pintor for the WBC Bantamweight title in 1980, but lost by a 12-round knockout. Richie was given two options to choose from by his father. You can be like Joe and go to prison, his father said. Or you can be like Albert and travel all over the world. Albert kept coming home with those trophies, Sandoval said. I wanted to get me some. He began boxing through the Pomona Athletic League and, like his brothers, came under the tutelage of Tony Cerda, a heavy equipment operator who devoted his spare time to coaching youngsters in the area. Cerda never charged for the training and paid all the expenses when the fighters went to tournaments. Cerda wanted to keep the kids away from the neighborhood gangs that were always looking to recruit new members. Richie hung around the 12th Street gang for a while, but left when his best friend was shot and killed. I could have been right there with him, Sandoval said. I wouldn't be alive. While his brother Superfly climbed the professional ranks, the spotlight soon turned to Richie as he garnered success as an amateur. He won three national championships, a junior Olympics title, and two Golden Gloves tournaments. He did this while attending Gary High School where he was voted best looking by his senior class. After graduation, he worked part-time at a clothing store and started attending Mount San Antonio College where he studied art. By 1980, Sandoval was a two-time national AAU champion and earned a spot at the Olympics in Moscow until President Carter decided to boycott the games. My whole thing was the Olympics, Sandoval said. I just gave up. I quit training almost completely. However, Sandoval eventually saw his future in boxing and turned professional in November of 1980, earning $150 for his first match. I did feel a little sad about it because uh, we didn't get to go, but uh, it didn't discourage me as much as it did to other athletes that don't have a profession to fall through as well as like boxing. And uh, that was as far as I was going as an amateur, it was 1980, then turning professional afterwards. And uh, it would have been nicer, I think, to gain a gold medal and uh, then turn professional. It would have looked nice, but, you know, I had to bear with it. His schedule was rigorous, fighting once a month for his first year and making his television debut less than a year into his professional career. In January of 1982, he passed his first test, narrowly defeating undefeated fellow prospect Harold Petty with a 10-round split decision. Less than three months later, he faced Petty in a rematch and once again won a narrow decision. By March of 1983, Sandoval was undefeated at 19-0 when he stopped David Bahinas in six rounds, a win which catapulted him to number three in the world rankings. Now knocking on the door of a title shot, Sandoval struggled in his next two fights, winning a split decision over George Garcia and later breaking his right hand during an otherwise easy win over Ramon Rico. Despite his undefeated record, Sandoval came into his title shot against WBA champion Jeff Chandler as an 8-1 long shot. Chandler was on every boxing pundit's pound-for-pound -pound list, an established champion looking to later unify the title. Sandoval was seen as another routine title defense, but came into the ring unafraid and uninhibited. Season. So here we go. This is scheduled now for 15 rounds. And a lot of people think it will go, if not 15, uh, perhaps close to it. Not too many people are anticipating an early finish to this one. 10-point must system, 10-point must scoring system here. The three judges do the scoring. They are Sam Sanders of New Jersey, Eva Shane of New Jersey, and Frank Cappuccino of Philadelphia. Arthur McCandy does not figure in the scoring. The three knockdown rule is in effect. If you go down three times in one round, the fight is stopped. And there is a mandatory eight count, no saving by the bell, except in the 15th round. Sandoval in the black trunks. Chandler, who's lost just once in his career in a non-title fight last summer to Oscar Muniz and avenged that by defeating him in this ring last December with the title at stake. Storm. 
arm early on, and he is taking some blows, good combinations from Sandoval. Sandoval undefeated, another good right hand, and a Chandler in trouble in the first round. Sandoval not letting up, relentless. Exploiting that opening. He came in with a right hand. left in the first round. Taylor, with good foot speed, both men move very, very well. Taylor needs to move a little bit better than he's moving right now as Sandoval again tries to take advantage and now a little bit of taunting from Chandler as if to say I'm not hurt. Jeff does that a lot. And here comes Chandler back on his own now. Chandler with a decent left that got in. 20 seconds left in the first round. So, a surprising beginning. As Sandoval is able to exploit the opening. And a very impressive first round for the challenger. What would figure to be a two-point round in the story. Most of the judges would give it to him in the black trunks. And Jeff Chandler in the green trunks. It has been basically all Sandoval to this point. Chandler has yet to get anything started. One of the reasons has been the left jab of Sandoval. He's been using it impressively and effectively. to have opened up just over the lip, the upper lip, maybe under the nose of Sandoval. The cut over Chandler's left eye has been effectively closed and has not bothered him since he incurred it in the second round. Forcing Chandler up against the ropes, missing with a wild left hand. But still putting the pressure on, throwing punch after punch, trying to penetrate the defense. And again, he has him backed into the corner as Chandler pushes him away and then begins to taunt him just a little bit. Jeff doing a little bit less taunting in his last couple of fights. A lot of people thought he taunted... Muniz too much, stuck his tongue at him in the 10th round of that non-title fight, and his clowning around may have cost him the decision, the only loss of his career. In a way championship, Jeff Chandler unable to get anything going through the first two-thirds of this fight. Sandoval started quickly and effectively, and again comes out with a nice combination here in the 11th round been involved in a fight of more than 10 rounds duration. He has been the 10 round distance a number of times over the past two years. Good left hand and down goes Chandler. Another left hand halfway through the 11th round. So Sandoval who started with a near knockdown in the first round gets his knockdown and the mandatory eight is given to Chandler and all of a sudden the Bantamweight Championship is very quickly slipping away from Jeff. As Sandoval still puts that pressure on here in the 11th round. Working inside. Backing him into the corner. It's been a familiar pose for these two today. And again, really dishing it out. Showing remarkable stamina here in the 11th throughout and showing no signs of tiring here. And that left, which has worked beautifully for him today. Starting the sequence of events that led to the knockdown of Chandler here in the 11th round. 20 seconds remaining in the 11th round. I think were for Chandler early on. Some of them beginning to chant Richie, Richie. He has impressed them very, very much. So here's a man from California 
Chandler is going to fill Again, Edgar Roman is the number one contender in this division. And so looking ahead, uh, if Sandoval wins it, it could be his next fight. It was going to be Chandler's next confrontation on his way to what he hoped was a unification fight against Davila. So here we go in the 15th and final round now in Atlantic City. Richard Sandoval, whose brother lost in a bid for the Bantamweight Championship WBC version to Lupe Pintor a few years back. Now on the verge of winning one for the family. A great left staggered Chandler. Chandler in trouble again here in the 15th round. Sandoval tying him up. Again, referee Mercanti does not figure in the scoring. The three judges at ringside will decide. And with Sandoval on his way to a victory, what's really stunning will be the margin of victory. If he had eked out a split decision, that would have been a, a big upset. But the way things have gone, nobody figured that this fight would be dominated the way it has been by Sandoval. Absolutely ecstatic. And Jeff Chandler took some beating today at the hands of the 23-year-old from Pomona, California, who came in as a decided underdog against a man generally regarded as not only the best bantamweight in the world, he was the world champion, but a man far superior to anybody else in this. Congratulate you. Did you in your wildest dreams think you could dominate Chandler like you did today? Well, not really. I had, knew it was going to be a chess game, but I didn't expect uh, I didn't expect to uh, to bring it out like this. Uh, I was just going to do my best. That's all I knew. To do it for Jesus Christ, because He did it for me. Thank you, Lord. Now you said yesterday you were going to pace yourself a little bit, but that opening came early for you in the first round with that one right hand, and it seemed like you were relentlessly pursued him after that. I trained very well for this fight, and that was my natural pace. It looked fast to me. When I watch myself on TV, I, I can't imagine how fast I am, and that's my natural pace. And to other people, they might think I'm sprinting, but I'm, I'm just relaxed and calm, and I felt good. I felt good throughout the entire fight. Well, you, you, look, you look terrific. Obviously, and uh, again, we congratulate you. And briefly, what about the future? Have you thought about that right now? Who's so, next? Right now, th this is what we were concentrating on really uh, intelligently, and uh, we, we definitely made it, and we'll think about it later. And uh, right now, I'm just so happy in my life that, God, I thank ABC for telecasting my fight, and God, I love you. And everybody in Pomona, in California, hey, I love you. Well, you deserve it. Congratulations. Very good. Outstanding I, performance. I want to give credit to Jeff because he was a really gallant fighter, and uh, he give, I give him okay. credit. Congratulations again. Let me just get a quick... He kept coming and coming, Chandler said after the bout. He fought like he wanted to be champion. Sandoval stated that winning the title made up for him missing the 1980 Olympics. This is paying for the gold medal President Carter took away, Sandoval said. The title didn't change Sandoval. He continued his art studies at Mount San Antonio College and remained living with his parents. Five months later, he successfully defended his title against Venezuela's Edgar Roman. In December of 1984, he faced Chilean slugger Cardenio Uloa for a second title defense. Y esta es la segunda defensa que hace del cinturón. Cardenio Ulloa, por su parte, clasificado en el lugar número 6 de las listas en la WBA. Una pelea que se pospuso en un par de ocasiones, pero que finalmente hemos visto en nuestras pantallas. de Ulloa, sacudió a Richie Sandoval y otra más.
of blood on Richie Sandoval, the champion. And he got rocked again by another right hand. Ulloa, qué duro, pega Ulloa y conecta otra derecha fuerte y sacudiendo a Richie Sandoval. Lo mismo que a nosotros nos está sacudiendo la bandera esta que pasa por enfrente de la cámara y que a veces no nos permite ver la acción. Muy peligroso este Cardenio Ulloa, dinamita en los puños. Centro de convenciones de Miami se sacude con los gritos de Chile, Chile. Y derecha de Sandoval y Ulloa se va a la lona. Sorprendió a Cardenio Ulloa cuando salía del golpe y le reventó la derecha en el rostro. Y ahora Sandoval se tira al ataque pero no lo puede hacer con mucha confianza. Por sigue siendo peligroso que primeros dos rounds de esta pelea. Y se ha hecho eterno este segundo round, aún le quedan 30 segundos. Está cazando Richie Sandoval y tirando golpes llenos de furia. Vamos Hector Macho Camacho. Here at the Miami Convention Center. This is the third round. They're scheduled for 15 WBA Bantamweight title fight. And of course we are left hand and down the ball. Y ahora Richie Sandoval es el que se va a la lona con esa izquierda. Muy fuerte pegan los dos. Y acaban de nuevo Sandoval, se ven malas condiciones. Allá va por el Ulloa. tiempo de decirles que estamos transmitiendo de manera diferida a pesar del letero que puede usted leer y ahora huyó a resbala se va a la lona está resbaloso el ring así que ya los dos se han ido a la lona y izquierda de huyó responde sandoval con lo mismo da la impresión que puede terminar en cualquier momento. A la izquierda de Cardenio yo a seca. Pero Sandoval responde con la misma medicina. que presagia más tormenta de la que ya hemos tenido y que ha sido mucha aquí en los primeros tres episodios. Otro resbalón ahí de Cardenio Ulloa y le dice el referee Magaña Sandoval cuando esté abajo no le tires. Parece que están peleando sobre una pista de hielo y ahí está una derecha de Richie. Y otra vez la izquierda de Richie Sandoval que sacude a Cardenio Ulloa. Sin embargo, responde el chileno.
Sandoval. Pero es muy difícil para los peleadores asentar sus golpes con el cuadrilátero tan resbaloso como está. A izquierda de Richie Sandoval y Ulloa va contra las cuerdas. Ahí lo remata Sandoval con izquierda y derecha y descarga una furiosa ofensiva a dos manos. Y cazándolo Sandoval, pero Ulloa no se da por vencido y también conecta lo suyo. Richie Sandoval no se confía y hace bien. Ahí está otra derecha de Sandoval. Cambio de golpes espeluznante aquí en el quinto. Ese fue un empujón. Y aparentemente Ulloa pues recibió un pisotón, así que por eso se cayó. Ninguno de los dos conoce la derrota. Eighth round, el boy 15, WBA Bantamweight Championship. Cardenio Ulloa, from Chile, the challenger in the black trunks, Richie Sandoval. Y del firmamento musical de Hispanoamérica, brillando más. White trunks. Cardenio Ulloa ha tenido indudablemente más problemas Ulloa que Sandoval con la superficie del cuadrilátero. Derecha de Sandoval. Estamos transmitiendo en forma diferida. de Sandoval y esa sí lastimó a Cardenio Ulloa. Fuerte izquierda de Richie Sandoval que explotó en el rostro del retador chileno. Sandoval parece ya en mejor distancia. Y conecta a la izquierda Sandoval. Vamos a ver, ¿fue resbalón o fue caída? Fue resbalón el referee Magaña, pero en cuanto sale Ulloa lo recibe con otra izquierda bárbara a la cabeza. En plena ofensiva, Sandoval conecta una sacudidora derecha y el referee Magaña está deteniendo la acción. El referee Magaña está deteniendo la acción. Vamos a ver, parece que ha parado la pelea. Así es. Knockout técnico en favor de Richie Sandoval aquí en el octavo round. Sandoval took four months off after the title defense, avoiding an upset in a non-title fight against comebacking former contender Frankie Duarte. Two more non-title defenses followed, with Sandoval fighting as high as 10 pounds over the bantamweight limit. He reportedly was having weight problems before making a title defense against the hard-hitting Gabby Canizales on the undercard of the marvelous Marvin Hagler John Mugabe fight. Of course, Richie Sandoval. Al Canizales facially reminds me a little bit of Roberto Duran. And equally as aggressive, and you see him come right out with a two-punch combination. Canizales, a 28-year-old from Laredo, Texas, expects to take the action to Richie Sandoval, and he hopes Sandoval will stay there with him. But right by Canizales. I'm amazed at the way Sandoval has been able to come down and wait. Al, I watched them box with Paul Gonzalez in, in L.A. He was about 130 pounds, wow. and that wasn't so long ago. I don't think it's good to take that much weight off in so short a time. And the reminder, he came in at 117 and three quarters. It's cold out here. Make no mistake about it. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 degrees. There are hot TV lights over the ring, but that isn't going to have as much an impact as you might think. It's still chilly out here. Yeah, by Sandoval. Combination by Canizales. Good. Lead right hand. A 
again by Canizales. He hurt, he he hurt, hurt Sandoval with that one. He hasn't hurt Al. There goes Richie Sandoval down in the first round. The champion has been decked. And he is hurt, Al. His legs are rubber right now. He, Sa Sandoval has been down before. I've seen him down by Javier Barajos for one. He's in some trouble. He's hurt this time, Al. 40 seconds left in the Nailed first again. round. Canizales looking to finish Richie Sandoval early. Throwing beautiful short punches out, snapping his punches. Sandoval trying to survive a rocky first round, really do it. Now again. <laughs> round one, a nightmare for Richie Sandoval. And it's ended. We go to his corner, let's listen. You gotta, you gotta move, baby, you gotta move. You know, you can't be standing in there with him, that's what I told you. Don't, let, don't go into that trap. You gotta move. Woke me up, son. All right. That's what I need. The top come off, put the top on. Come on, baby, you gotta do it, Richie. You're the man, you're the top, Richie. Look at the beast. You gotta move, baby. You gotta move. You can't back him. You can't stay in there, but he's gonna come out for you. When he, you can't let him get set. You either gotta get off or move. Make him reach for you. Yeah. Make him reach, okay. or I'll make him. I'll come right and beat him with a punch. Okay? okay. Don't let him get set, baby. You're the champ, Richie. You're the champ. Fuck into it, Richie. You gotta move, baby. Gotta the the move, voice baby. of Tony Serta, and boy, they told him what you had said at the beginning. He's got to move. Well, Al, I think it's what you had said at the beginning. You pick. You picked up the fact that he was standing still. And I just told you, you should be moving from side to side. Anyhow, we picked it up right Somebody away. Somebody did anyway. <laughs> In any case, we hope Richie Sandoval picks it up, or at least his corner does. Good round, for, obviously, for the challenger. He's highly motivated in this fight. He is wailing away with combinations. Still no movement from Sandoval. I can't believe what Sandoval said. He said, that's what I needed to wake <laughs> me up. Yeah. I wouldn't want to need anything like that, Al. People, people Sandoval already. was really rocky when he went back to this corner. It looked like he was walking on a boat. Had a hard time finding his corner, too. Good left hook. Sandoval's hurt again. Canizales hurt him with a good left hook. What about the defense of Canizales, Gil? It's excellent. Excellent defense. Hands up. Wings his punches and gets back in good position right away. Very impressive. And Sandoval, until he gets hurt, all he does is use that left hand out. Yep. Three punch combination by Canizales. The other guy's punching in combination. Sandoval's using one hand. It's one gun against two. The lead right misses, but that's been there several times for Canizales. Now remember, Richie Sandoval has been a slow starter in other fights. I mentioned he'd been down against Javier Barajos, also went down against Alonzo Gonzalez, came back to win both those fights. But Gabby Canizales may be a whole different story. And you have to remember how this fight is scored on points. He's behind a lot of points right now. Certainly a 10-8 round in the first one, and he's losing this round pretty big also. That'll do it for round two. First, Richie Sandoval's corner. Look at that beautiful combination by Canizales. Beautiful. And Sandoval is stunned again. This is just what Gabby Canizales wanted. And Sandoval is telling him, come on, come on. Vivo, vivo, vivo. You can go too far with that macho, Al. Richie Sandoval has never lost. He is 29-0 with 17 KOs. And a great amateur record, Al. Tremendous. He won. He would have been an Olympian in 1980, but for the boycott. He feels that robbed him of notoriety and money. And right now, Gabby Canizales would like to rob him of the title. That left eye is getting to look more angry all the time. There's that right hand right on it again. <laughs> Round three is history. To do his anti-rain dance just before the show started, and I guess it worked. We're into round five. It only works in Rockaway Beach, huh? 
Al Bernstein along with Gil Clancy and Tim Ryan, a delight to work with them, I might add, bringing you this championship boxing action. And Gil, uh, scoring-wise, how would you look at this fight? Well, I, I have Canizales way ahead, Al. Again, we're, we're on a points base, point scoring basis, not not a round. Again, he has Sandoval hurt badly, Al. Left hook, has two hurt. left hooks. Is he nailing him? Sandoval in trouble on the ropes. Fights his way off. Lands his own good right hand. No question, he has a champion's heart, Al. He has been rocked several times. He was down in the first round and on wobbly legs, but Canizales couldn't put him away. We're in the fifth. Big right left early. uppercut. It will be a knockdown. The second of the fight. That's a very effective punch that Canizales uses. It's a half jab hook. Brings it right between Sandoval's hands. And he has Sandoval hurt badly now. Just a question of time now. Canizales with a right that doesn't land solidly and still hurts Sandoval. Richie on wobbly legs Nailed trying to again. push him off. Luto, Luto. Nailed him again. What, what heart that Sandoval has though. Now. He's taking big shots from Canizales. He's still there. Standing dead still. Here in round five, he's fighting back off the ropes. He's been down once, close to going down again. There's no snap in his punch, Al. I really think that weight was a problem for him. And Gabby Canizales delighted to take advantage of it. What a superb performance by Gabby. Richie languishes on the ropes and pays the price. Padilla looking carefully. One good hook to the body from Canizales and Al is going to set up everything else. Making a mistake and too much for the head. Sandoval fighting on hard, but lands a three-punch combination. A gutsy performance by Sandoval. Well, we knew that. We knew we had the courage. And blood now, I believe, from the right eye of Gabby Canizales. And he gets a shot on it from Sandoval. There's a bad cut over the right eye of Canizales. Wow, what a round. What a round. Get him out, baby, get him out. I saw him moving in there to work on that cut. We're into round six. What a soap opera. Sandoval down in the first, down in the fifth, but in the fifth round, fighting literally on instinct, I would think, Gil. He opened a cut over the right eye of Canizales. And it's in a very bad spot, Al. It's under the eyebrow. Could prove to be very, very troublesome. If I was, if I was in Canizales' corner now, Al, I'd tell him, you got to go out and get this kid out of there. The cut could be a big factor, as Gil said. And for Canizales, he's got to despair a little bit over that because it's the only blemish on what has been a tremendous performance by him. When he had Sandoval hurt badly, Al, he made the mistake that so many fighters make. He just went headhunting. One or two punches to the body, and everything else would have been academic. And he is a good body puncher, Canizales. Canizales heading out for the seventh round. Well, Jesse told Gabby Canizales to keep using the jab and keep winning the rounds. And I hate to disagree with my good friend Jesse Reed, but I'd be telling my fighter to start using those bombs, start throwing the hooks, and try to get him out of there. Well, you mentioned that the cut medicine may take more effect as it goes on. Do you think he's just trying to buy some time? Or? Well, no, I think that that's his strategy. Now, he's, he's, very, he's way ahead in the fight. I guess he figures he got it in the bank. But I'd, I'd be a little more concerned about that cut because one or two more punches on the cut, they can bust wide open. Also, uh, a reminder, this is only the seventh round. Now, it's scheduled for 15. Now, certainly two of those rounds were two-point rounds for Canizales, so he is probably way ahead. But as Gil said, that cut could stop things prematurely. Sandoval gaining some confidence here. Landing the jab, still not throwing much behind it, however. And still standing dead still. 
And now they've, they've turned Canizales into a boxer, Al. And he was very effective when he was just walking in and throwing those combinations. And as you pointed out earlier, he might even be able to out-jab Sandoval. Both fighters using their jab and not much else in this round. And Canizales' combinations have become fewer as this fight has gone on. He may be getting a little tired, Al. He set a torrid pace over the first yes. five rounds. Yes, wow. he did. But well, the well-trained fighter should get his second win. Then he has another advantage. They're fighting outdoors. And I've always found that a fight outdoors, a guy can go an extra three or four rounds because he gets a lot more oxygen. There goes Sandoval from a right hand from nowhere. He is really hurt. Richie Sandoval hurt again. Al, if he survives this, it's going to be a miracle because he was really hurt. For all the world, it looked like it would end in the fifth. Now we're in the seventh. He's been down again. A jab sends him down. Remember, Al, three knockdowns and the fight is over. The three knockdown rule is in effect. One more and Richie Sandoval, his history and his title is gone. He's down. That's it. Gabby Canizales. The youngster, the 28-year-old from Laredo, Texas, has done it on his second try. Richie Sandoval still on the canvas. And they will minister to him quickly. It was a bad knockdown, the last one, referee Carlos Padilla said. I could hear his head hit the floor. Sandoval had a seizure after the knockout. The race to save his life began. When I got to Richie, he wasn't breathing, Dr. Flip Pemansky said. He was having a seizure and anyone having a seizure stops breathing at least momentarily. We cleared his airway with a plastic breathing tube and he resumed breathing. He was put into the ambulance quickly and we had him at the hospital within four or five minutes. Sandoval was unconscious for 14 minutes and his brain was swelling, but later that night he was pronounced as stable. Sandoval recovered but never fought again. It wasn't me in the ring for that match, Sandoval said. I don't know who it was, but it wasn't me. I couldn't make the 118 pound weight limit. If I could have moved up to 122, then I'd have been strong, but it wasn't my title at 122. Sandoval then got a job with Top Rank as a publicist, but was a jack of all trades for the boxing promoter, arranging chairs, tying loose tent flaps, as well as being a liaison between the promoter and the Spanish-speaking fighters. By 1990, Sandoval began training fighters himself, notably flyweight contender Scotty Olson. On July 21, 2024, Sandoval died of a heart attack at his son's home in California. He was 63 years old. Boxing is a difficult sport, Sandoval said. The most difficult. Nobody can call it a walk in the park, but I have nothing to feel bad for. I had 168 wins as an amateur. I won 29 professional bouts. I won a world championship. <laughs>